Wonderland. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to this channel, I talk mainly about mushrooms, have awesome mycologist guests, pretty much anything that has to do with wild mushrooms and even cultivated mushrooms sometimes. And me and my dog Gunner head into the woods all the time and we just see what mushrooms are growing out here and identify them. Um, I am the creator of Mushroom Wonderland. I'm also the vice president of the local mycological society here on the Kitsap Peninsula in Western Washington, right in the Puget Sound Basin. So I'm about an hour from Seattle, but I'm surrounded with all these beautiful kind of uh, Western hemlock forests around here, a lot of Douglas fir and these deep dark forests that uh, are home to a lot of fungi. So I come out here and just help you to identify those um, mushrooms that you're seeing alongside the trail. And maybe if you're in the pursuit of edible mushrooms or if you wanna go deeper into mycology, we do all of that here on this channel. So make sure you hit subscribe and that thumbs up button and anyways today is the 28th of october it is late in october the rain just got here last friday so we've had a really long extended dry summer and it's been miserable for us mushroom hunters but thankfully the rain has been falling everything is wet but still it takes a little while for the mycelium to kind of wake up and get growing and producing fruiting bodies so um it's been exactly one week last Friday. It started raining, so it's Friday today. And I'm gonna go for a walk on a trail that I love to take my dog for a walk on, not far from my house. And we're gonna see what mushrooms might be growing trail side so that you can get an idea in your area if things are popping up, what those are called, and what we got going on, the first mushrooms of autumn after the first of the autumn rain. So thanks again for joining and let's head into the woods. If you're looking really close, you can find some diverse species and some pretty isolated little micro habitats. But um, in a big picture sense, the mushrooms have just not came up yet. So let's go see if they're starting to peek their heads out from under the moss. So I featured these guys in a recent video and uh, they've grown to full maturity. So if you didn't happen to see that video, uh, here they are again. But this is a... Uh, a type of an inky cap that are growing um, usually off of buried wood or roots and this one is known as the alcohol inky cap look at that coprinopsis atramentaria so this is a beautiful mushroom growing cespitose like this in a little cluster and they have a really dark jet black spore and so these are okay to eat unless you plan on drinking alcohol within a week after ingesting them because they have a strange reaction. It actually is the same thing that happens with an abuse when an extreme alcoholic takes medication to avoid drinking. Uh, they get really sick if they do drink and that's what happens if you eat these mushrooms and then drink, so. But otherwise you'd be totally fine. I don't drink alcohol, but still I'd be a little bit leery of them uh, just because they have such a strange reaction. But the Coprinopsis uh, atramentaria, uh, uh, inky cap fairly common all over the United States. So there you go the alcohol inky caps They do look a little bit like shaggy manes, but they're not shaggy at all very smooth pretty So I love it out in this kind of forest if you look it's mainly Western hemlock It's got this really kind of tight bark like this and it's got all these tiny little needles that are all of different sizes um, that's how it gets its scientific name, but these are host to a lot of the mycorrhizal mushrooms that are popular edibles out here. So this kind of forest is where you're going to find your chanterelles and stuff. We've got a uh, salal, um, this Oregon grape. There's taller shrubs like uh, rhododendron and black huckleberry all over the place. There's some sword fern thrown in here, even some bracken fern. Uh, a bit of moss on the ground. The mushrooms like this. They like an environment that's not windy, not too sunny. They like it damp and they like it still. So this is a really good patch of chanterelles growing here in the winter. I've found big uh, cauliflower mushrooms growing on old stumps in here. Very uh, fungi rich habitat down in here. There's even some devil's club down yonder. There's some kind of wetland areas in here. So. One of my favorite places to forage mushrooms here in Western Washington, and Gunner loves it too. This is pretty exciting. 
sighting coming down this beautiful little trail my conifer woods and just look right on the side of the trail and right here can you see these little guys starting to poke their heads up oh yeah baby this is what a lot of you out there are looking for this is the golden chanterelle or cantharellus formosus uh, the pacific golden chanterelle there's a lot of different chanterelles that grow all around the world it's a large genus of mushrooms cantharellus but these oh there's big ones coming up all over right here beautiful so i'm going to flip this camera around and show you what it looks like to find these in situ which means in their environment and where they grow so we're going to take a close look at these golden chanterelles i can see them popping up everywhere so the rains have paid off the mushrooms are here so let's check these beautiful mushrooms out. So here's your Pacific Golden Chanterelle in its natural habitat. You see that growing right out of the moss and right out of the needle duff. They do not grow off of wood. So these always grow off the needle duff. And if you got down in here far enough and really did a careful job at digging this out you could see the mycelium from this mushroom actually attached to some roots that are just going to be you know within the top six inches of duff here the tree roots run out and it's just in this constant fight for nutrients and um, moisture and so the pacific golden chanterelle grows attached to these roots and that is what we call a mycorrhizal uh, relationship so the fungi can't grow without these trees and the trees don't do well without the fungi in fact some people think they won't grow at all but this is a beautiful example of a golden chanterelle you've got the edge of the cap is really roughly like that we call that the margin and it, and it kind of curls over like a like a wave at, at a flood you know and it gets pretty thin. And right here, these aren't your typical gills, like on a regular gilled mushroom that you would get from the grocery store or something. These are called veins or ridges. And you see, they just kind of fade out as they go down the stem. That's called decurrent. So these have decurrent gills. And this surface is actually where the uh, spores are produced. And so spores are like mushroom seeds. And this one mushroom is gonna produce hundreds of thousands, if not millions of spores. And uh, it is right now, it's sledding off just a ton of spores into the forest right now. So beautiful. Another feature of these mushrooms is that if you go to tear it apart, you see that it shreds apart like chicken or something. It doesn't, it doesn't snap real easy. It shreds like string cheese or chicken. So they have a unique smell. A lot of people would say they smell like apricots. They definitely have the color of apricots. And they smell very pleasant for a mushroom. Look right over here couple more poking out so the chanterelles are definitely popping up right now in the Puget Sound Basin October 28th so if you feel like it's too early it's not so cool um, I don't think it harms the mycelium to pluck the mushroom but one reason why I do cut chanterelles is just to keep dirt out of my basket um, I'm gonna cut these and I'm gonna put these in a foraging bag that I have I'll show you in a minute and a beautiful find, Cantharellus formosus. All right, so I'm walking out off the trail, off the beaten path, and I come across this crazy mushroom right down here. You see this? This is an amazing example of what's called rose comb mutation. So. It's when the cap starts to, uh, you know, grow extra little caps and lamellae, like new gills on top of the cap itself. So I'm gonna flip this camera. I'm not really sure what causes this. There's like a few different ideas. Uh, one, I, one paper I read somewhere said that uh, it could be from spilled petroleum products. Like somebody that was um, logging here, you know, 80 years ago, and they spilled a bunch of bar oil all over the ground. Perhaps that's why they do this. Um, I've also heard that maybe it's because it, you know, it froze and then it froze the top surface of the mushroom. And then when it thawed, the mushroom gave it another shot. And so it tried to regrow new uh, lamellae on top of the dead 
tissue from the freezing thing, but it certainly hasn't froze here this year. So that kind of rules that out. But let me flip this camera around, show you what this crazy rose comb mushroom looks like. So yeah, this is a Pacific golden chanterelle with a rose comb mutation. Walking through the forest, it kind of looked a bit like a, a cauliflower mushroom or something. You see that? Look at how crazy that looks. Yeah, that's a chanterelle. So many little folds and crevices. You see, it's like little tiny fruiting bodies trying to grow off of one big main one. Right here, a cute little western hemlock cone found its way into that. Those cones are really good for that. They find their way into all the little nooks and crannies. But this guy might be tricky to clean out for sure. But uh, I'm going to pull this guy up and let's see what it looks like underneath. I'm going to get down underneath here. Oh, it's a chunky boy. It is. Oh, my gosh. This thing's got a deep root. Oh, Lord. Look at that thing. That's a chanterelle and a half. Holy smokes. Can you believe that? This thing weighs like a pound. Wow. This thing is producing some serious spores from all of this stuff. Look at that. How cool is that? That is one beautiful disaster right there. So, Pacific Golden Chanterelle. This is Cantharellus formosus with rose comb mutation. Yeah, right here, 28th of October, 2022, right in the Puget Sound Basin. So, this is enough to feed a whole family. This thing is seriously big. So, um, I am going to take this with me, but I'm going to take some pictures of it first. Because nobody would believe that. Well, I got video, so now y'all have to believe it. That's a big, chunky, rose comey chanterelle. How cool. So, yeah, that's awesome. I take a picture with this little ruler next to it so you can get an idea just how big this chunky boy is. You know, we're like six inches tall. So, I take my little, uh, my little gather Americana little mushroom knife. And I'm just going to cut the base off of this. That's where all the dirt really is usually. It's a little tricky while I'm holding a camera to show you how I'm doing this. But I just want to get rid of the base. And the rest of this I'll clean up when I get home. And I'm going to put it in this neat little net bag with my other chanterelles that I've got today. And, uh, you know, it's not quite as good as a basket. Because they can get kind of squished into the bottom if you get a lot of weight worth of mushrooms in there. Um, but you can always put twigs and make it more rigid, like a, like the bottom of a basket. But I love this little thing. It just goes in the bottom of my backpack, my little foraging sack. It sprinkles spores as you walk through the forest. So you can get that and you can get this knife just by going to the description and clicking on the links. I'll put a link in there for the bag and for the knife. And, uh, yeah, so amazing find with the rose comb, crazy chanterelle. That was awesome. So. We're going to keep foraging. Right down here, kind of in these crevices, I see the gold of the chanterelles popping out of the moss. They do seem to like little little crevice areas and stuff to peek out of. Look at that one. It's like a beautiful forest flower. It's like a perfect one. So, again, doesn't hurt to pluck them like that. But do tread lightly and try not to tear up the forest floor. There is a mycelium under there. And the apple tree to apple analogy is maybe a little bit of a stretch because mycelium is undoubtedly more fragile than an apple tree. But it, it's literally the high, the high phase running all over through this forest. So picking the fruiting bodies is not going to hurt. Not going to hurt anything. And you're actually helping it by spreading its spores around. Beautiful little chanterelle. Look at how perfect wavy that margin is picture perfect if you want to find the good mushrooms you got to get off the beaten path you know you got to walk out into the forest a little ways and that means if you're dressed all super casually you're probably going to get soaked this time of year in the pnw but this is the habitat you need to be looking at you see it's uh there's dead downed logs everywhere Moss covering the forest floor. A lot of sword fern in this area. 
Chanterelles are often found among the sword ferns. Very bright. Looks looks pretty pretty out of place on the forest floor there. So that's a yummy morsel right there. Looks almost like a Clavidaria delphis or one of those club mushrooms, but we don't have those here in the PNW. So, and you can see those decurrent veins. Definitely a chanterelle. In the bag we go. And heading down the trail. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. That is a foamy topsis. Look at these big tree conks. So these guys, probably a foamy topsis mounsiae. Used to go by foamy topsis panicola. And then it got changed into two different mushrooms. The ocracia and the mounsiae. This one, I think, is the latter. A red-belted conch is how it's commonly known. People use these as uh, tinctures and medicinal teas and stuff like that. And a very common mushroom, brown rot decay, so it's eating the inside of this conifer log here. And a very important mushroom to the eco ecosystem and the ecology of the forest. Fomitopsis monsiae, or the red-belted conch. Dang. Look at this. A bit of a follow-up from our that video a while ago. Look at all this turkey tail. Trimedes versicolored is growing in this crazy stacked up formation on this chunk of maple. So you can see the poor surface underneath there. The false turkey tail or sterium uh, is really common around here too, but it doesn't have those pores underneath. So these are you know, said to be highly medicinal mushrooms. There's quite a fruiting of them on this log right here. Very beautiful. So, you know, you could pick these and put them in a tea. And then it's been suggested to me recently that you pulse up the fruiting bodies and everything into a slurry and drink that. Maybe like a hot chocolate that's kind of thick to get all of the medicinal benefits out of these mushrooms. A lot of polysaccharides, anti-inflammatory agents and... They're even said to help battle cancer. So, Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail. All these concentric rings. And you can kind of see why. Next month is Thanksgiving. And they kind of look like a little turkey. A little turkey tail. So, what, a, what an amazing fruiting of them right here. I'm going to leave these ones here. Areas like this can often be good hunting grounds for mushrooms because... There's not a lot of underbrush, so it's easy to navigate through this mossy stuff. And it's just beautiful forest, but honestly, it seems like a lot of these mushrooms like a little bit of brushiness. When it's wide open like this, you can find little mycenas and little strobilaris and inosibi, you know, little tiny uh, LBMs, if you will. Um, but, uh, but it sure makes for easy walking, and it's really beautiful in this kind of a forest. Just love this time of year. Definitely my favorite time of year. Look at this. On some downed logs, we have a couple of types. Of a polypore is growing here. There's this really rusty orange polypore. I've seen that a couple times this year, and I need to learn what that is. I don't, I'm not sure what that is, but there's a red belted conch right underneath it. So they're kind of growing on top. This one, in fact, looks like it's growing out of that one, kind of, but kind of a cool little fungi formation. Piles of logs like this can be a hot place to look for mushrooms because mushrooms love dying dead wood, you know. Right here, Foamy Topsis mounsiae. Big red belted conks, very healthy ones. So they're eating the inside of that log. Really common mushroom. Call that the red belted conch. There's some more there that are probably dead. I look over here to the left, and there's something growing down here. This little depression. Oh. Looks like this part just got busted off. The stem isn't even there, so. It's just the cap of a 
Rusula brevipes. So this is uh, the host for the lobster mushroom parasite Hypomyces lactiflorum. A really common mushroom here in the whoops in the forest. Russula has a strange thing going on with its cell structure that makes it really fragile. It kind of breaks like chalk. Not really fragile. I guess that's the wrong word, but but when it breaks, it's kind of like styrofoam. And it, and uh, if you just snap the stem with your fingers, it breaks a lot like chalk. But I think these are a uh, you know they're great when they get parasitized by the Hypomyces lactiflorum. They turn into a great edible mushroom. But when they're in this state, yeah, you could definitely still eat this. Um, there's even been tests that where people were blindfolded and tasted these next to lobster mushrooms and nobody could tell the difference. But, uh, personally, I like to take the old Russell of Breva peas like this and find a nice tree. And that was very lame. I threw it left-handed, very weak left-handed and it didn't even hardly break, but they can shatter. I promise they can shatter if you throw it decently. Oof, that was rough. Moving on. So I'm not seeing a ton on these wood chips, uh, but I look down and, you know, a trained person can spot something like this. And if you look right here, pretty unassuming, could match the bark pretty well, but this is an old moldy chanterelle. I can tell, Ugh, should be seeing it. See that? Golden chanterelle, so growing right on the side of the trail. So this is a good time. I'm gonna bury that back up. It has done its duty and let off all the spores it can, but. Then I'm going to look around at where its mycorrhizal host might be. So in this area, a lot of these conifer trees, you know, they could, it could be in, uh, in association with any of these, but I would bet probably closest, you know, within about eight feet of this western hemlock. So this is the mama bear and she's feeding a patch of chanterelles here. And this patch of chanterelles has likely been here forever, way before this trail got carved in here. So... I don't know, hundreds of years, these chanterelles have been growing in this spot, and they probably jump across the trail. But if you see chanterelles growing in wood chips like this, it's because they have a mycorrhizal host and your wood chips were put down after. And these mushrooms have probably been here way longer, way longer than humans. So, um, you know, it's just interesting to look and be like, oh, hey, mama, and kind of pay your respects to, uh, to the host of these beautiful fruits of the forest. One of the things that I have a tendency to do when I'm mushroom picking is keeping my head down, which is good. You find a lot of mushrooms on the ground, but don't forget to look up once in a while because this time of year, there's a lot of beautiful foliota. So these are gorgeous mushrooms that grow off the side of trees and rotting wood out in the forest, big clusters of these gemmed, beautiful, and sometimes slimy, gorgeous tree mushrooms. Also all of the conchs, the oyster mushrooms, the chicken of the woods. Pluteus, and even some active hallucinogenic species of Gymnopolis will be growing off the side of the trees up at your eye level. So if you're looking down the whole time, you might be walking right by the chicken of the woods or big, big flush of oyster mushrooms or some laughing gyms and not even know uh, because you've been watching your feet the whole time. So try to mix it up, you know what I mean? So in this area, typically at this time of year, you can't take a step without stepping on some kind of a mushroom on the trail, anywhere in the bushes. I mean, it is just everywhere. There's little mushrooms, big mushrooms, brown and white ones, black ones, all kinds of mushrooms. So this year is still off to a slow start, but uh, pretty soon this forest is gonna just be a carpet of different rusulas and lactarius and little strobilaris all over the pine cones and all kinds of little inosobes and cortinarias. This area is very fungally rich. So just imagine underneath all this uh, wood chips and bark and moss and stuff, there's a whole network of mycelium that's right now just getting ready to explode. And you know, mushrooms are gonna be everywhere here in one week. So maybe I'll start a thing where I try to do an update more often. Maybe I'll come back to the same area just to see what kind of mushrooms are growing new. Sounds like a good idea, right? Here's a really conky tree. Look at these are all brand new fruiting bodies, super young and fresh. Red belted conch. When they get older, that's gonna look like that. How crazy is that? There's an old one, probably a year or two old. These can grow for many years. And right here we got 
we got youngsters real fresh youngsters Ooh, i see some beautiful mushrooms down there let's go see let's go see what we got growing here oh beautiful those will catch your eyes from a little ways away look at those they've got kind of a greenish tinge to them even sort of like a neon yellow or greenish tinge and i'm gonna pluck this guy they're often clustered like this and don't worry i'm not hurting anything actually i'm spreading a lot of spores around so this is how you id a mushroom but we got to look underneath and so this mushroom is known as hyphaloma fasciculari or the sulfur tuft you could probably remember sulfur tuft easier they like to grow in these big clusters like this always on dead wood so they're on this dead log here and uh very common in the forest around here and quite a poisonous one one that you should be aware of if you're out into uh you know getting wild edible mushrooms from the forest you should know the ones that are fairly dangerous these ones won't kill you but about 100 percent of the people who eat them have gastrointestinal upset sometimes vomiting and uh you know it can be pretty violent i guess so definitely avoid these but these are beautiful to look at uh, at night with a black light they actually glow like a fluorescent green so bright you can see them from like 50 feet away in the forest check out the other videos especially the black light foraging videos uh to to see that happen but the sulfur tuft this is one of the first mushrooms i remember ever identifying grew by my mom's house on some stumps every year it grow back and i just always thought it was beautiful but it does kind of look dangerous and, uh, and you can see on the cap of this one, it's actually got spores that have fallen from this cap onto this one. So it's kind of a spore print and it has this dark purple brown spore color, just like uh, the genus Psilocybe wood, but these definitely aren't magic. we will send you to the toilet for a couple days. So Hyphaloma fasciculari or the sulfur tuft, always growing on wood. So they're beautiful though. Cute little pins popping up right here whoa check these out beautiful so interesting if you're into mycology you know how far down the rabbit hole you want to go these are pretty so what i'm going to do with these ones is i've got a little a little ruler here and i'm going to take some photographs really nice clear pictures of these slimy lbms growing on this little knob here in this dried out creek and gunner's going to help me and then we're going to take these specimens in this little plastic container so they don't get smashed they go into my backpack and then when we get home we can put out a spore print and we can put them in the microscope to see what we have yeah so what i do when i don't know what what these mushrooms are is i'm going to just collect collect some of them and take them back and then spore print them and identify them and learn about them that's how you learn you know just a mushroom at a time so um you know, maybe do one to three mushrooms every time you go out and try to ID them. I don't know if that's too ambitious. Shoot for one uh, one mushroom a day or one mushroom a month or a year or whatever you got to do. But this is kind of how I do my, my thing. I'm going to collect these and I'm going to go take them home and study them and learn everything there is to learn about them and see what, uh, what I retain from it for the future. So... So I start walking up the trail and this catches my eye. This is so cool. Look at this. This is a purple court. Cortinarius violaceus. Beautiful, beautiful mushroom. So this is a mycorrhizal mushroom, happens to be growing out of a stump. So there must be, you know, little roots coming off of these trees. This like hemlock right here has got little roots that just kind of waterfall over the stump. And they run underneath all this stuff and i bet you that's where this is attached to this is not a common find really um, and is one of my favorite mushrooms so beautiful and purple that i really want to consider how i want to process this mushroom before i pluck it i want to um, consider all the ways that i can document this and take some good photos of it i carry my nice camera in my backpack so i'm probably going to get out my nice camera and take some nice pictures but it's kind of a weird setup right here so I might just take a couple of photos with my cell phone and put them up on INAT and, uh, and then we'll pluck this and have a look at it. So here we go, Cortinarius violaceus. I'm gonna get way down in there. Look at that. 
so pretty and it's got this rusty orange spore print let me set this down it's got rusty orange spores because it's a cortin area see this fuzzy stuff here on the stipe that's called the cortina so that's how cortinarius gets its name and then the spores mature they land on the cortina and they're this rusty orange color but look how purple this guy is really long long stem and then pretty fuzzy on the cap so beautiful mushroom now i can take this and i can stage it somewhere better for photography but i just always think these are very photogenic very very beautiful mushrooms When you get into this kind of a forest where a lot of it is like western red cedar and uh you know all this is an alder tree but a lot of this is maple maple and cedar not going to find a ton of mycorrhizal mushrooms because they don't associate with western red cedar they also don't associate with maple trees and very limited amount of mushrooms here grow with alder trees um, so you know if you're in an area like this you can find saprobes a lot of wood eating mushrooms you know on the logs and stuff like that but you're not going to find chanterelles and lobster mushroom porcini or masataki a lot of the echo mycorrhizal mushrooms just walking down the trail something catches my eye look at this wood it's got this greenish color to it and uh bizarre right i see i see where it came from here's another one that's got this bluish green color so this is actually a fungus that's living inside this wood. This is the mycelium of a fungus that discolors the white cellulose in the wood and turns it into this green, blue, turquoise kind of color. Very unnatural color for nature, right? It's beautiful though. This is known as Chlorocyborea aeruginosa. And so it has little fruiting cups on it sometimes. Not today, not seeing the cups today. Some literature will tell you that they're rare to see the cups, but I don't know about that. I've seen them as many times as I haven't, which this is actually pretty common. So if you ever see these blue sticks, you know that that's a fungus. And some people really prize this. Uh, a friend of mine, the Mushroom Marauder at mushroommarauder.com uh, makes trinkets and jewelry out of this, Chlorocyborea wood, little necklace trinkets and things. Uh, super duper cool art so i have a big chunk of it that's laying in front of the buddha in my garden in front of the house so um but it's always exciting and cool to cool to find chlorocyborea out in nature especially when it's that that colorful ah, a bug. no i'm just kidding that's pretty cool so yeah adam mccray mushroom marauder if you want to get some jewelry uh that's made out of this kind of wood very cool stuff what it is man but i swear when i'm making these videos the mushroom gods smile on me let me flip the camera and show you what i just came across on the trail this time this is pretty exciting i find all of these in one day on a little forage i didn't expect all of this but look at this underneath this moss oh that looks foul and it smells pretty bad but this my friends is the lobster mushroom hypomyces lactiflorum so this mushroom is uh, from that host over there that we saw earlier, the Russula brevipedes, uh, when it gets parasitized by Hypomyces lactiflorum, it turns into this crazy contorted mess of a delicious wild edible mushroom. So a lot of people are after these mushrooms. They look just insane, don't they? So that's beautiful. All that white stuff is spores from the Hypomyces going back into the ground. So it's quite debated whether these get parasitized as full mature fruiting bodies or if it happens at the mycelium stage or if it happens in the primordia stage it's hard to say but uh these can be very prized at 50 you know 50 dollars a pound or 40 dollars a pound at the uh, pike place market i'll put a picture up right now of that exact price at pike place market i'm not going to take that one i'm going to actually kind of 
bury that back down in the moss and we'll just let it decompose and do its thing we just kicked a lot of spores around so yeah those little guys make shrumps these little lumps in the moss and when you tip it you know when you turn that moss over you'll you'll reveal a beautiful lobster mushroom sometimes so what a cool day what a cool day man i just love coming out in the woods and i like taking y'all with me so um we had a really productive day out here i got a lot of chanterelles in my backpack that are going to go to the dinner table um, and we ran across some really cool other mushrooms you know just that lobster mushroom right there the uh, cortinarius violaceus a couple of mushrooms that i don't know that i'm going to take back and study anyways thanks again for joining mushroom wonderland hope you got some value out of that video make sure to smash that subscribe button and squish the like button and then fondle the notification bell or whatever so that you can get all the up-to-date you know info this channel we're constantly releasing mushroom videos you know alan rockefeller he's often on the channel he's a friend of mine a lot of these stars sydney over singleton you got to check out those videos so make sure to stay tuned to this channel tons of mushroom videos coming your way so if you have always looked for you know mushroom programming on tv look no further than mushroom wonderland take care y'all much love everybody peace